Ladies and gentlemen, that face you see before you is, uh, I always like to kid, an ex-wife. It's not kidding. It's true. It's true. Uh, it's true. In fact, you know, this Ronnie Bennett, by the way, I was just listening. Uh, I put it up online uh, because I thought people might be interested in hearing. It was an interview that I did at WPLJ, and you were there because you are referenced with uh, Stan Lee. Oh, I was going to bring that up, that he died this week. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, and uh, it was one of a couple of interviews we did. It's the only one that I have a copy of. And he reads Spider-Man to the kids out there in the radio. Oh, did audience. he? <laughs> yeah. And you, you, you come up because we mentioned... Um, we mentioned uh, uh, what was the what was the show you were on to tell the truth? Which one was it? The yeah, to tell the truth to yes. tell the truth, and he had been on it. As, oh, as, so did we talk about as, it? As, and of course, as the real Stan Lee, right? Uh, he said we watched the show on television. My wife couldn't figure out which one was Stan Lee, uh, and I said I, then I talked about the fact that you had been on it as yeah. a fake dancer from Old Calcutta. And uh, a fake nude dancer, fa from fake nude dancer from Oak Calcutta, right? So we, uh, uh, we, we, and we, I got two votes. I know. And then he says to you something like, "Hey, Ronnie," because you obviously were in the studio with us when right. the interview was done. So, yeah, that was a long time ago, and uh, out of the three sure of was. of the three of us, one is dead. So, yeah. you know, one's getting there very quickly. <laughs> well, we, well, I'm not going to bring it up, but we're all getting there. You know, I, I, I mean, I'm getting that. sick and tired. I can't tell you how sick and tired I am. You better not die on me. And I'm going to tell you why, because I'm sick and tired of everybody I know dying. Yeah, I know it's hard to get old. You know, as you That's get one older, of the big things. eventually, I mean, what was the story I heard about a guy who used to go to his uh, his high school reunion every year? And one year he went and he was the only guy there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I used to get invitations every year. And this year would have been 68, 78, 88, 98, 80, my 60th high school reunion. But nothing came this year. Really? Because yeah. I remember I went to one of yours with you. That's right. I forgot that. Yeah. Yes, you're right. And I, I commented on how interesting it was to be in a room in which all people within a pole say a center pole were six months difference in age from each other right okay uh and but uh, they all look and very they, and they ages. all they all look different ages yeah that everybody ages differently and that's, that's right. that was my great first great lesson in life you know <laughs> that that the good lord isn't good to all of us you know it was funny that some I recognized and some I didn't know from. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the good Lord isn't good to all of us, and some of us he allows to buy facelifts. So, you know, it's, uh, uh, but, it, it, you know, I, uh, uh, that, that was uh, quite an interesting evening that way, you know. Uh, but I never went, I went to one of mine, and then I, I it was going to be on a boat uh, up near Petaluma somewhere uh, uh, along the river there, something. Anyway. I drive up to the boat and I see the people getting on. It's like my 30th or 40th, right? I think it's my 40th. And these people are all walking onto it. And I'm, I'm looking at them and I'm going, they're too old to be my classmates. Uh, did you bring a mirror? And, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I just, I freaked out and turned around and went home. Oh, you didn't I, go at all? I didn't go at all. I told the oh, story oh, on the oh. air about how I just couldn't bring myself. Because number one, you went to Drake High School? Yeah. I, 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 if it weren't on a boat, I might have done it. But on a boat, you're stuck with these people for two That's hours. That's right. <laughs> you know, you can't go anywhere. You can't jump off the boat or whatever. So I made a decision, a conscious decision. I just, I, you know, I don't want to have to deal <laughs> deal with these people. Jeez, <laughs> Alex, give me a break. <laughs> I'm not as old as they are. Yeah, them, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know. you didn't bring a mirror. Yeah, well, I mean, looking at them made me suddenly realize that, you know, I better go look at the mirror. Yeah. But, you know, so. Uh, it, it, and I went to one 10 years earlier. This was very funny. And I went, of course, Bennett Schwarzman, you know. And I'm going to, it was at a ranch somewhere. And I went. And it was, again, very interesting, uh, you know, because it was interesting to see uh, how people had aged and, and so on. 
And uh, is that why we go to reunions? Do you think because we want to see if somebody aged better or worse than we did? Well, actually, we want to make sure, we want to hope that they all aged worse than we did. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I uh, um, I went to this thing, and I'm talking with somebody, one of my classmates, Ben, and I'm Ben Schwarzman. has got it, got it on the little the thing on my chest, you know. And all of a sudden, she looks at me and goes, "You're Alex Bennett." <laughs> Said, so she'd been listening to you on the radio, but yeah. didn't know that you were a classmate until that's, then, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So I was found out. I see. I've got a story for you, a very interesting story. Okay. Um, and toward the end, it involves you. As most things do, if they're good stories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Give me. <laughs> Jesus. Um, well, have you ever sent away for your DNA? Yes. Okay. Um, I wasn't interested. I'm just not interested. Look at my face. You know where I came from. You know, um, and I and I don't have any. Well, interest how do we in know by your face where you came from? Europe. Well, I mean, it's got to be it's Africa. It, Come on. It, no, it's not Africa, but neither am I. Um. So I just wasn't very interested. At least not at ninety nine dollars. But about a year ago, it all this place <laughs> were having a si sale for fifty nine or sixty nine dollars, and so I thought it was maybe worth that much. Yeah. And I signed up at one of them. Didn't read any of the information, you know, about privacy or anything like that. I just filled out the form and gave them my PayPal account or a credit card or something, and um, and let it go. And about a month later. I get an email via the website yeah. from another person who's a member of the website mm -hmm. that says, apparently you and I are closely related. 50%. <laughs> now, since my father is dead, yeah. uh, that could only be a child. Yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah. Well, you may or may not remember that I had a baby. Yeah, very, very when. early, very early on. Yeah, twenty-one, twenty-two. Yeah, and you know, I, I I had the baby, and when it was adopted after he was born, I had arranged that I would sign the papers without knowing the name. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody screwed up at the hospital, and the name was splashed. The parent's name was splashed all over the place. So that's not something you forget, right? So the person who signed that email was had that last name, so I knew it wasn't a mistake or whatever else it might be. Um, and so there you are, 55 years later. And... Uh, so, you know, I... Well, wait a minute. Now, now, this person was what in relationship to you son son oh boy oh i didn't oh did i leave out the important part <laughs> either that or i wasn't paying attention but i think yeah yeah so so this reader of yours is your son not a reader it came from the website oh, oh i see okay all right the dna I, website i get those things too where they send you and they say you know uh, the only one they got uh, got right so far was my cousin, who is my well, cousin. They keep telling me fifth cousins. I don't really care, you know. About fifth right. Cousins. I'm not having a family reunion anytime soon. Right. So, um, you know, so I didn't know quite what to say, but I answered in some manner, and we exchanged a few emails and some. He had read my website. And um, and I, I've got a whole timeline with pictures and stories that I told. Right. So he found out a lot about my family, and we exchanged some of that information. And then that started early this year. And then comes spring, if you remember, over most of the spring, I had two surgeries. I was in the hospital twice for a week each and recovery yeah. afterwards for an internal bleed that was plaguing me. And, uh, and I just let it go, partially, too, because... I was uncomfortable. I didn't know what to do about this. Um, and Yeah, I don't know what I would do. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's no rule book, you know? Yeah. And uh, so 
and the only ones they ever show you on on YouTube are people that have been trying to find each other for years and years and years. Well, you, you know, I had I had a son. Uh, I I believe I had a son. At least it was asserted that I had a child that was given up for adoption, and I found out it was a son because I could read upside down, and I saw it on the doctor's desk. Uh, and and uh, I often wonder what happened to that son. I often wondered whether I should go looking for that son. And then I decided, no, if he wants to find me, that's what I should do. Because I don't want to suddenly jump into his life and say, here I am, Dad, and he goes, I was adopted, <laughs> you know, or some other traumatic well, I, thing I like have that. very strong feelings that giving birth or fathering if you will yeah. a child has nothing to do with being a parent it, you right. have to take care of this kid and love them day in and day out no matter what they are what you know however yeah. much they, they drive you crazy that makes you a parent right and uh so i think you're right about that but in my case it you know the son did come here so i just kind of dropped out of our communication for a long time and he's obviously been reading the blog all along so that when I announced this new cancer diagnosis about two weeks ago, I guess it was three weeks ago, um, I got an email from him again. And so we've spoken on the phone now twice at great length, two hours. And I really like him. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. And we're, um, there, there's a lot of similarities. Some, that it just crazy you wouldn't believe they could be we both are big fans of Gore Vidal we've both read everything Gore Vidal ever wrote mm -hmm. um, we're both fans of time travel novels mm -hmm. um, there's what I I don't know how you even talk about this very well but in talking with him on the phone I sense that our mindsets are similar that we think about things in a conversation the similar in a similar way mm -hmm. and we make similar kinds of connections when we're talking. Um, and after the first couple of hours uh, that we spoke, I just, for the next two or three days, I I just felt such a warmth. I can't say I feel motherly. I'm, I'm no, not no, a mother. No, I, I, never I, did know, that. I know what you're probably talking about, you know, because I think I would have that same feeling if I finally met up with my son. Well, I don't know that I would if I didn't like him. <laughs> you know? Well, I've made certain determinations about mine, uh, and uh, uh, judging by certain things and so on, I have determined that he's Howard Stern. So, <laughs> <laughs> Is Howard Stern young enough to be your kid? Well, I had the kid when I was 18, 19. So, God, we were stupid, weren't we, about where babies come from? So, you know, that would be 60 years old. He could be 60 years old. Howard's a little older than that, but I know it's not Howard. But uh, uh, I, you know, I often wondered what, you know, my kid would be an old man by now, okay? Well, you know, that's a funny thing, is that uh, Tom, his name is Tom Wark. Uh -huh. And, oh, and by the way, he lives in the Napa Valley. Mm -hmm. He is a wine expert. Yeah. He runs a blog for the wine industry. How old is he? 55. 55, yeah. And that's what I wanted to say, that that's pretty funny. Because if I read about John Smith in the paper 55, yeah. then I don't really think it exactly, but sort of in the back of my head, oh, he's getting old. And so it's really weird to have a kid who's 55. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. getting it. I wouldn't let, me, let me ask you a couple of questions about this, though. Uh, because I knew you after you had had that kid, and you, you always talked about it. It was something that was weighing heavily on you. Really? I don't remember that. I don't yeah, recall. I mean, you. it was enough that you, you considered it a, a, a real blip in your life. and <laughs> Yeah, you, you kind of. And, and uh, so, I mean, I knew it, and we talked. we'd talked about it on several occasions, and you seemed, I don't know what I felt you seemed. You were just, you were always, you were, it concerned you, okay? Well, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, so I kind of have a vested interest in this story. Uh, well, you even have a bigger vested interest. Uh, uh, I haven't told you yet. Oh, is there a surprise ending to this? 
Well, it's not an ending. It's just a little piece of information. Oh, okay, well, let me finish first. Let me ask oh. you a couple of questions first before we lead to that. We may as well not ruin the big payoff here. Oh, it's not big, but it's oh, nice. Uh, yeah, it's nice. Uh, 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 did, you, uh, did you find out who raised him and things like that? Yes, and I knew that. when uh, The doctor who took care of me during yeah. that, um, and once I decided that the baby would be adopted, they gave me two or three choices of some people who wanted to adopt a baby. Mm -hmm. And I said, don't tell me their names. But they gave me their particulars, you know, what, what their ages were, where they were from, what they did for a living, that sort of thing, whether there were other children adopted or otherwise. And, um, and however those decisions were made, I could have I made the choice. I could say no. Um, and I could say yes. And so um, the family... That took him, um, I didn't know their name at that time. Uh, but, and I had made arrangements I, with whoever you talked to back then, um, that when I had to sign the papers, the legal papers, for him to be adopted when I was in the hospital, that they would not fill in the name. I didn't want to know the name. Yeah. Uh, I was very young. And I didn't know if knowing the name or anything like that would make me change my mind. And these people had paid for all my medical expenses and right. all of that and had updates on my condition. And I didn't think it was fair for them to go through all that and me to change my mind at the last minute. Right. So, uh, so I had arranged for that. They brought me the papers in the hospital. And they're right there on the paper. Yeah, the names big of the <laughs> name. <laughs> And it's not something you forget. You know? Right. So if I had any question when I got that first email from yeah. him, um, if, that if it was real or not, which, you know, it's DNA, probably not a problem. It's probably real. Um, I, the name was right there. I knew it was the same name, so it wasn't a mistake. Wow. Um, wow. So, you know. Another question you had? Well, no, that that was basically the question, you know. Oh. And, and ha how did he feel all these years about the fact that he was adopted? Did he, did he just kind of, did that affect him at all, or? He um, he loves his family. Yeah. I they were really good parents. Yeah. Um, and he had a wonderful upbringing. He's very happy. Uh, and that means, I mean, I feel good about that because I made the choice, you know? Yeah. yeah you he had a family. Yeah. Um, and uh, so here's just, you know, we were exchanging information. He'd found out a lot of information about me on the website and my family, which, as you know, was um, is pretty small, particularly compared to yours and all your relatives. Yeah. Um, but uh, but then he was, you know, he was telling me more about himself. And he grew up, terribly important to him, apparently, listening to you when you were in San Francisco. Oh, geez, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> he was a big fan. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think now. Let's see, how many years ago is that? That was 19, uh, he had to listen to me anywhere between uh, 1980 and 1997. And he was born in 1963. He was born in 1963. So, I mean, he would have to have been kind of an adult, would I say? Uh, 63. When did on. you start in San Francisco? Uh, 80. 80. So he would have been 17, 16, 17 yeah, when he started, yeah, if, if yeah. he started at the and beginning. Then he, and then he would be, start becoming an adult and probably kept listening to me and was a fan, you know. Yeah. Isn't that Son nice? Of a bitch. Well, you know, I mean, and he never associated anything with anything, right? No, had no reason to. Did, he ever, make, did he ever make any attempt to find you in, in his lifetime before, uh, before this? I don't, um, I think he would have mentioned it mm -hmm. by now. Yeah. He had. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was obviously interested in his background by signing up with the DNA site. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one of the important things about this, besides the curiosity yeah. and interest um, for, in situations similar to mine and yeah. his, um, is medical information as important. Yeah. And if you're adopted, you have no idea what your medical background, your family's medical background is. Right. 
So, you know, we exchanged a little of that. I mean, the important thing is everybody in my family dies of cancer. So, you know. Yeah, I got, I got good news for you, kid. You're going to love right. your DNA report. <laughs> so, anyway, that's my big story this week. But, and we're yeah. going to be talking some more. And the thing is, I really like him. I feel, and it's only you fun. you tell him if he's too. really good, he can meet Alex? Pardon me? Did you tell him if he's really good, you'll introduce him to Alex? <laughs> um, and what, but what's really nice is that I feel, I don't feel motherly at all. I can't find a motherly bone in my body for anybody, but um, but I feel a connection of some kind. Well, no, what, no, you're not going to feel motherly because you never were a mother to this person, okay? Or anybody else. <laughs> but because you have a certain commonality, you're going to feel an affinity towards this person. And uh, I think it's wonderful. I think it's I just do. wonderful. I, I mean, if you were to put a period on your life, this completes something. Oh, you know, I hadn't thought of it that way. I yeah. think maybe you're right. It really yeah. completes certain a certain question mark you had in your life. And it was probably always lingering there. I know my kid still lingers with me every now and then, you know. Uh, uh, I, uh, and as I said, at one point I was going to, I was going to hire a detective to go find him. And then I said, <laughs> no, then I said, you, know, oh, you don't have a name. See, I knew a name. If I, I, I don't have a name, to. but you know, I, I knew a detective who said he could do it. He could f figure it out. And then I decided not to do it. I decided that it was his job to find me, not my job to find him. Uh, and I'm sure if you've ever had that pang, you probably felt exactly the same thing, you know, that why jump into somebody's life when you've never been a part of it, you know? More than that, on the, I, you know, I never thought much about tracking him down, but if I did on rare occasions, it's more than that. And what in the world would I say? Are his parents still alive, by the way? No. No. Oh, Okay. Because um, I would what, wonder how they would react to him talking to you, you know. Um, but I, but I, I had no idea what I would say. Tom made it very easy yeah. for me when we first spoke on the phone and when we email. And and that opening line of a, you know, apparently you and I are closely related. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. <laughs> I mean, that made me laugh so much. I mean, I had to, I had to write back. Is he married? Does he have a family? He is married for the third time, and he has a four-year-old son. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. You know, it... And ha apparently very happily married, it, and great little kid, it's, and... Um, it's very funny, but I actually met up, or had contact with my, the woman who had my kid. Uh, she wrote me a few years, uh, many years after, uh, when I was working on the air in San Francisco. And she said, uh, uh, this is uh, Sandy, that was her name. And uh, you remember when we used to hang out, Phil? And she named all the people we used to hang out with. But she never mentioned that she had a baby by me. In any of the letters that we, we communicated back and forth by, I think, I don't know if it was email in those days. I think, it, yeah, it could have been email. Uh, well, that wasn't all that long ago then. Well, it was lo it was long enough ago that I think email was a pretty new thing. I don't, I'm trying to figure out how we were communicating. We weren't. Did we talk on the phone? I don't remember that. But anyway, she was. I kept trying to drag out of her uh, facts about, like you know, for her to say <laughs> yeah, and then I remember we had the kid, but she never said that. And at one point, at one point, I think in a letter I wrote her, I said, well, you know, you were a very big influence in my life. And she writes back and she says, I don't know how. So I always wonder, what, what was that all about? You know, it was definitely her because she could name people we knew. Mm -hmm. But did she block it out? And then she started <laughs> writing about one son she had who was a trouble, was trouble to her, that he had all kinds of mental he was always very depressed and uh, and so on. And I'm thinking, that's my kid. She didn't give it up. And I so I'm I'm wondering, you know, to this day, finally I stopped dealing with her because I couldn't get her 
to say anything about, you know, I didn't want to just come out and say, remember you had a kid by me, <laughs> you, you know, in case maybe she but was. But you didn't know at the time? She didn't say anything at the time? No, she, she never, ever said anything about that. But then she would talk about one of her kids, her oldest kid, who approximately fit within that window of when this kid was being, my kid was being born, like she hadn't given the kid up and at the last minute and raised it and uh, the kid turned out to be uh, depressed. <laughs> really, and he, the way she described his depression and everything, I said, that's my kid, <laughs> you know, he's <laughs> fucked up just like me. So. I don't think of you as depressed ever. Oh, I, yeah, I'm worried, I, hypochondriac, but that isn't depression. Oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm depressed all the time too. Yeah, you know, <laughs> nothing, nothing's ever good enough. You know. So uh, there you are. Uh, you know, I've been a big failure in life, according to my way of thinking. You know, and everybody else goes, "Are you kidding?" You know, <clears throat> but, uh, but then again, I remember a story about Bing Crosby. And somebody talked to him once about the fact that he was the greatest singer in the world. And he says, I don't know why anybody listens to me singing. I can't understand it. He never thought of himself as being that big or that important. But why anybody would want to listen to him sing. And I'm thinking. Fortunately, they did <laughs> for his career. <laughs> I can understand that because I think you don't under totally understand your impact yourself. Unless you have a complete ego like Trump, and then you think you overestimate your impact. But anyway, wow, that is a great story. That is just terrific. And with that, yes. I guess we should bring this to an end. But boy, what a, you know, as I say, it, it, you know, it, at this point in your life, that's a great resolution to have. A button on it. A button. Yeah. Yeah, it's yes. really nice. Are you going to meet yes, up with it? Is. And the best thing is yeah. he's a really nice guy, and well, I really sure. like him. Well, you did a good job of raising him. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> or I found him a couple of good parents. Yeah, you found him a couple of good parents. Are you going to get? Are you going to see him? I don't know. It hasn't come up. It hasn't come up. That's. No. Does he know your current situation? Sure. He's been reading the blog. God. He knows. That's, but it's great for him, too. You know? Yeah. God, I'm happy for both of you. That's good news. Yes. That's really good news. Hey, yes. Ronnie, let's do it again. See you next time. See you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, ex-wives keep cropping up. <laughs> Ronnie Bennett.